From the historic hand building in St. Paul, it's the Haberdashers Couch. I'm Kendrick, inviting you to the show, starring Jaime and Dorset, featuring Todd Walker, also featuring Amy Charlo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Jaime. Welcome to another show of the Haberdashers Couch, where you don't have to pay somebody to listen to you. And I tell you, it's Fashion Friday, and the reason I like Fashion Friday is because it comes with you. Yeah, I like it. I just like, I just, I really, I, I do. just, Keith is, when I hear that, I just really do like oh, it. Oh, Monday, I really do. I really, Fashion really, really, really Friday, do. I made the cut, I'm like, oh yeah. Keith, I got a riddle for you. What's 8,000 years old and stronger than alloy steel, but is relatable to our business? My underwear. I mean, no. <laughs> Could be. Could be underwear. Silk. Huh? Mm. Silk. Ooh. Has a tensile strength that is relatable to alloy steel, folks. Jeez. That's right. And it's luxurious and biodegradable. How do you get so much out of a fiber? You squeeze a silkworm. Aww. Thank you, my friend. Not only do you squeeze it, you steam them. Huh? You pull the cocoon apart. Yeah. Keith, one silk worm cocoon is responsible for 900 yards of thread. Wow! Wow. That's pretty impressive. Yes. So the Chinese, this is 114 uh, BC, BC? BC, created Silk Road, cool. and then Arabs, right? Hmm. The, the Arabs, the in, the uh, Eastern Indians, India, all became silk worm connoisseurs. Mm. And it really mobilized societies. It really made some of those societies rich. Yeah. Hey, that's Just like us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one, we sell one silk tie, we go to lunch. We sell two, we have steak. We well, sell three, well, we go have, home. I just have a, <laughs> I, I can only afford a, a right? replica of silk. <laughs> but I can't think of a more luxurious is, fiber is, than is. silk and all the things that it's responsible for. It's very fascinating. I like to thank the process. worms of the world. Yeah. Anyway, Keith, technology, weave technology has gave it, given us this beautiful jacquards, Ooh. right? The jacquards, we talk about jacquards all the time in, in the business. You can have a three twist jacquard, which really gives you a lot of texture, right? Uh, and loft mm -hmm. and body. But I, I guarantee you that with a tensile strength of alloy steel, you buy a tie for muscle, it lasts forever. Cool. Well, right? that's the problem. Yeah. And so, Keith, this here is a, a tuxedo that we carry on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Not a true silk jacquard, but if you saw a real silk jacquard jacket, it would be nice and shiny, right? Yes. It would have more relief in the burnout. This is a burnout fabric here. And it'll also be a hundred times more expensive than this. It, and, and it really would be. A, a jacket like this, it would be in intricate. silk. Yeah, it's a pretty intricate process. It is an It's very fascinating. Um, that is <laughs> our little talk on silk, but then I just want to ask you, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Make me yeah. want to go buy us some silk underwear. <laughs> I, silk boxes. Do you have silk sheets? No, because I used to slide. We used used to my slide. wife was pushing you me off. You were getting injured. <laughs> I was either getting pushed off the bed yeah. or yeah. the silk was Well, it's funny because I have two straps that I... Well, anyway. You know, um, yeah, yeah, no. I tell you what, folks. <laughs> Keith, it's wonderful to see you. Maybe check out one of the festivals we've talked about with Todd About Town. And Amy was in talking about fossils in Minnesota. So check her out. Basically, she was talking about me. <laughs> no, you're no fossil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. Oh, I love her. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. It's Todd About Town. Todd Walker. Entertainment, travel, and more. Hey, Todd, what's new? Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen. I'm proud to be sitting next to Todd Walker. Todd About Town, whose information gives us something to do every weekend and makes us look forward to life. I tell you. That's, a, that's a lot for me to carry. Something it, to make you, you got, look you got, forward you to life. You got broad shoulders and, 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 Jeez. and nice legs. Jeez. What are you worried about? It's a lot to carry. But, well, I got to tell you, we're going to start with the Aquitennial Festival. I just want, I want to prompt it. All right. Because I did some homework. Okay. Boat, boat races, 450-mile canoe derby. 
It went all the way down from Bemidji all the way yeah. down the Mississippi River. That's what kicks kicks it off. Yeah. I don't even does that happen anymore? I don't I don't I don't that, know if that still happens that way. I don't think so, but the no. Aquitennial was founded in nineteen forty. Yeah. It celebrates the city's lakes. Rivers and right. streams. So if you're going to uh, go and look for the people to come in from that are on the canoes, I think that might have happened <laughs> that, when that the Daniel started. Yeah, right. But no, they did. They did bring back the milk carton boat races, which is a big deal. Um, and it they they extended it one day. So now it's four days. Um, originally, it was called the ten best days of summer, and they and then they even extended it more than that. And then they went way back to like one weekend, so they're gradually extending it a little bit. And there's a number of different things to do. So, for example, if you've never gone down and seen the water skiers, right. uh, are, are just really fun to watch. And that's just a free show, mm -hmm. and they do all the acrobatics. I actually got up there on one of them once and had to be on the top of the pyramid on TV. Wow. The scary. That was you? Yeah, well. I got a video on that. Yeah, right. But anyway, the Aquitennial is going on. There's a number of different events. I've given you uh, the website as well for you to check yep. out. And the Target fireworks Ooh. so <laughs> are coming back. It's interesting that Centerpoint Energy uh. get, gets billing and Target gets building. <laughs> building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on, yep, on they're, those events. they're probably two, changed throughout the year too. I yeah, that's two of the big, yeah. uh, the big sponsors of it. But and then of course they have the huge Aquatennial Parade that happens, the Torchlight Parade. So it, it's just it, you know it looks like it's going to be a nice weekend. Great things to attend. Right. Todd, why do Minnesotans love festivals so much, and why do we eat so much food and beer? What every we must have. Well, I think that's around the but, world. No, we have like there's a festival every weekend. It's, it seems that way because we compa compact all of ours into like four months maybe, and other parts of the country that can spread it out, but because of our weather. And now, Todd, we have the famous food truck festival. Yes, food truck festival is happening at Union Depot. Uh, it's in the back, so if you know where the buses come in and, or the trains go out, uh, it's it's actually in Union Depot Lot C. So they're having 60 different uh, food trucks. <laughs> And so if you, you know, are one of those people that think, oh, I don't work in a downtown area where I can go and mm -hmm. uh, visit the food trucks, they all come together over the weekend. And I was shocked to see that there's going to be 60 of them. Uh, it's going to be a big deal. Plus, they are going to have, like, music and, cool. like, you know, uh, jumbo Jenga for people to play. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have uh, beer trucks. It's going to be an all-around festival once Global again. Global cuisines from Maine, mm -hmm. lo lobster rolls yeah. and... A biryata tacos, yeah. a New Zealand meat pies. Yeah, yeah it's going to oh. be a big deal. Okay. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah. that's right back. Right. But it's kind of hard to find, so you're going to have to look for it. And then... We have another summer fest. Yep, this one is happening. West so 7th. if you're looking at something to do on Saturday, well, Saturday and Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, you in St. Paul, you can certainly go from the Food Truck Festival and then just go down West 7th Street to their S summer fest, which is happening at Keg and Case. This one, yeah, they have a six dollar admission, and they also are going to have food trucks, definitely fewer than the other one is, uh, are having, and then they have live music and activities for kids. So this happens on Saturday and Sunday. Mick Sterling, Jellybean Johnson. Kendrick was filling me in on, he knows all these guys. Oh, okay. And um, and so what's interesting is now we got a Midtown Blues Funk Fest. Do you know how long this has been going on? How, you how know, I years? don't. I've, I've never heard of it. Yeah. Maybe Kendrick has heard of it. But yeah. it's the Midtown, and we're referring to Kendrick, who is yep. on the other side of the camera. Yep. For those that uh, have heard us drop his name. So this is the Midtown Blues and Funk Fest. Cool. It's happening at Dual Citizens Brewery over on Raymond, which is kind of a cool little spot. And this is happening on Saturday, and it goes from noon until 10 p.m. Uh, free to attend, and as you said... Some people uh, that have, uh, will be very familiar with some of these names, such as Jelly Bean Johnson. He's played for many, many years. He played at what club was it, Kendrick? He played downtown. Minnesota Music Cafe. Oh, Minnesota Music Cafe. That's right. And then he uh, bunkers. Mick, yep, bunkers. And Mick Sterling and the Stud Brothers. Uh, Mick Sterling's been around for. Ever so he'll be playing. Uh, so there'll be a lot of mus musicians you'll be familiar. And then and then we're we're still in in the uh, I think we're in baseball season until October. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> hundred and plus games. Yeah, but you know the games you know. Are, they've, they've improved the yeah. the speed of a, a baseball game so much. Right. So this is and it, it's fun to see Chicago White Sox play the Minnesota Twins, sure. and that's happening Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Target Field. I looked up to see what the tickets are. The least expensive ticket is twenty three dollars, but. 
uh, bringing your credit card for the cost of all the, oh, uh, the it, somebody it, just told me they paid, much, yeah. I think, $20 for a beer. Right. Uh, yeah. It's very, very expensive. And, you know, and they said they're the king size glasses, but right. who wants that? The beer right. gets warm by the time you get halfway through. And so when they shorten the game, did they just take away third base? They, they well, they have the Empire. <laughs> Forget it. Oh, so clever. So clever. That's right. Um, Todd, once again, yeah. uh, I I, uh, I can't thank you enough for coming in and sharing all these great things to do. Are you going to do any of them? Uh, um, yeah, I think I that think was I a will. very uh, I, no. I mean, I I should I, I have to. I I'm going to do. I I don't know which one. I'll I'll, I'll figure it out. All but, right. Okay. You can report back next week what you did. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll see you next week. the hypnotist here at beautiful Jaime's Haberdashery and this is Coffee Talk. In Minnesota our state bird is the loon, the state muffin is the blueberry muffin, and our state fossil is Castoroides, huh? which is the giant beaver. Giant beavers ranged across the United States from Alaska all the way down to Florida 1.6 to 10,000 years ago. Wow. We found some beautiful fossils of the giant beaver here in Minneapolis and in St. Paul. And if you'd like to see one, we have a beautiful example of one over at our science museum. Mm. They were enormous enormous animals with teeth up to seven inches long and they weighed and were about the size of a small black bear. They were huge. They could be up to 250 pounds they think. Now these beavers were different from our modern beavers in that it appears they did not build dams. In fact from the looking and studying their teeth it looks like they didn't chew wood at all. They ate aquatic plants. But they were really large animals. They had smaller brains per size of the animal than our modern beavers, so they may not have been quite as clever. And sadly, unlike our modern beavers, they did not appear to have that signature paddly tail. But they are really cool animals. They are our state fossil, and that's Coffee Talk. <laughs>